friends greetings from dr r satish kumar principal sengundar college of engineering tirchangur this is part 1 of a lecture series about electrical engineering fundamentals and its applications in various engineering sectors in this first part we see about the electricity and basic terminologies electricity is defined as physical nature of movement of charges through materials physical nature this term is used as electricity behaves differently with different materials electricity that develops in certain materials heat electricity develops light in certain materials electricity that develops force in certain materials it behaves differently with the different materials so electricity can be defined as physical nature of movement of charges through materials the invention of electricity cannot be attributed to a single scientist and cannot be described by a single event its invention happened from bc 300 greek scientist thales he found that the resin of amber tree when it is rubbed on rugs or woolen clothes it exerts some force then the amber that attracts small pieces of papers or small pieces of threads the greek word for amber is electron e l e k t r o n electron so the very origin of the word electron that starts from amber nowadays this amber is used for making jewels the greek word for amber is electron the fundamental unit of electricity is electron the tholus he recorded his findings that is amber when it is rubbed on rugs or woolen cloth it exerts some force and attracts small pieces of papers or uh, small pieces of threads or clothes he recorded his findings this was followed by dr gilbert in 1600 1600 dr gilbert he found that not only amber many other materials when they are rubbed on other materials exert force then they attract the small pieces of papers or clothes he found that and he listed the pair of materials which exert force when they are rubbed against one another the list has been shown here he also found that the polarity and the strength of that force that nowadays we are calling it as charge right that force differs from for different materials the polarity and strength of charge that depends on materials for instance amber when it rubbed on rug it becomes positively charged when glass rod it rubbed on woolen cloth it becomes negatively charged so the polarity and the strength of charge depends on materials this effect is called triboelectric effect triboelectric effect that is when materials are rubbed against one another and they are separated they will become electrically charged and attracts small pieces of Uh, papers or other materials this effect is called triboelectric effect 
Dr. Gilbert found this triboelectric effect happening with many pair of materials. Uh, likewise, glass rod, woolen cloth, ebonite, woolen cloth, amber and rug, plastics and human hair. Likewise, many items, many pair of materials he listed. Then by 1700, two scientists, Francis Hawksby and Charles Francois Defey, these two scientists, they proposed a reason for this happening, this triboelectric effect. They proposed that all materials made up of two fluids, namely vitreous and resinous. The pressure difference of these two materials make the flow of charge from one material to other material. That is the reason for the attraction of materials, the triboelectric effect. Uh, this is a kind of fluid theory they proposed in 1700. Then by 1752, important invention happened. The very popular scientist Benjamin Franklin, he did an experiment for lightning to establish lightning is also by electricity. He flew a kite by tying a key on one end. He found that electric charge. He felt the electric charge. So he found that lightning was also by electricity. And also he proposed that the triboelectric effect not by two fluids, the vitreous and resinous, right, proposed by uh, two scientists, Francis Habasky and Charles Francois. He denied it was not by two fluids. It, uh, it is happening by single fluid. And the flow of charge happening because of the pressure difference in that fluid. When materials are rubbed on against another, they get pressure difference. Charge is flowing from high pressure material to low pressure material. And also he termed high pressure as positive, low pressure as negative. So the charge is flowing from positive to negative. Benjamin Franklin is the first scientist who introduced plus and minus to the electricity. Then this was followed by Henri Marie Ampere found that the way to measure the quantum of charges moving, the moving of the quantum of charges moving measured by Henri Marie Ampere. This is by 1775. Then by 1800, Alessandro Olta. Alessandro Olta, he found that uh, when the copper and the zinc coins are piled alternately, the electrical charges can be stored in it. This was the first battery. So battery was invented by Alessandro Olta. Uh, during the same period, 1800, Galvino found that by using this battery, he found that electricity that exists in all living beings. This electricity stimulates muscles and nerves of living beings. Very important invention by Galvino. Electricity that stimulates muscles and nerves of living beings. For this purpose, he used many frogs. For his experiment, he used many frogs to confirm uh, the electricity that stimulates the muscles of living beings. Then, followed by Michael Faraday, he proposed electromagnetic law of induction. Then, George Simon Ohm, he proposed Ohm's law. Then, by 1897, Johnston Stoney, he 
named electron dr gilbert he named he named the triboelectric effect then he named triboelectric effect by latin word electricus so from that electricity the word was coined by dr gilbert the electricus that was the reason for electric the word we are using electric nowadays right so this word was coined by dr gilbert johnson stoney used this word electric and uh, the electron is responsible for electricity he found that electron is responsible for electricity he named the particle as electron by using the word electric and ionization electric plus ion electric he took the letter e l e c t r from ion o n he took so e l e c t r from electric o n from ion then he formed the word electron and also he found that electron is the basic unit and responsible for electricity by 1870 many inventions happened by using electricity the alessandro volta he invented battery that was the source of all other inventions happened in the later period thomas alva edison and nikola tesla these two persons are very prolific inventors they have invented many things many appliances of electricity thomas alva edison have patented more than 1000 of his findings 1093 patents he made almost all the appliances what we are enjoying today from the inventions of thomas alva edison the nikola tesla he worked with thomas alva edison and then separated uh, he started his own industry and he was responsible for alternating current applications and establishment of commercial electricity nikola tesla he was the first person for establishing commercial electricity and also he found that polyphase systems polyphase electric systems the wireless power communication important invention of nikola tesla wireless power communication these two scientists are source for the electrical appliances what we are enjoying today right now we see the materials how electricity respond with materials how it is flow what are the materials responsible for flow of electricity or establishment of electricity all materials of this universe made up of basic units called atoms john dalton he invented this atoms all materials are made up of atoms each atom has sub particles namely electron proton and neutrons electrons are evolving in the orbits protons and neutrons are in the center part of atom called nucleus in a neutral atom electrons are number of electrons are equal to number of protons the number of protons is called atomic number of that particular material number of protons plus number of neutrons called as atomic mass of that material the electrons are present in orbits the electrons in the outermost orbit called as valence electrons they are loosely bound with the nucleus the electrons in the nearest star base bound strong and the orbits moving away from nucleus are loosely bound from the nucleus so the outermost orbit is most loosely bound 
electrons they are called as valence electrons they are responsible for moving charges from one atom to another atom electrons invented by j j damson he named as corpuscles he named these particles as corpuscles then electron that name was given by johnston stony as we mentioned earlier protons invented by rutherford then neutrons invented by james chadwick to understand the presence of electrons and their ability of conducting charges we use energy band diagram which has been shown here energy band diagram here the first one valence band and conduction band these two bands are overlapped for all metals this valence band and conduction band are overlapped so there is no energy gap there is no gap between valence band and conduction band so no energy gap semiconductors a more gap between valence band and conduction band by using a small excitation we can move the electrons from valence band to conduction band next one is insulator uh, here the valence band is a uh, and the conduction band gap the gap between valence band and conduction band is large so large gap between these two bands so much energy required to shift an electron from valence band to conduction band here we have not fermi level fermi level is the energy required to move an electron from valence band to conduction band at 0 degree kelvin you see for conductors first one for conductors the fermi level is within the band merge that is valence band and conduction band are overlapped one another so immediately the electrons are very near to the fermi level so readily they can be transferred from valence band to conduction band with very very little energy is required to move an electron from valence band to conduction band in the next material semiconductors there a small gap is there so some amount of energy is considerable amount of energy is required to move an electron from valence band to conduction band so they are called as semiconductors the other category insulator here the gap you can see the fermi level is large gap from valence band and conduction band so it requires large amount of energy to transfer an electron from valence band to conduction band here the energy gap of insulators is greater than energy gap of semiconductors which is greater than energy gap of conductors that is metals so conductors semiconductors and insulators we can classify the materials as these three conductors semiconductors and insulators example for conductors we can say aluminum copper silver gold these are good conductors example for semiconductors germanium and silicon germanium and silicon example for insulators wood glass plastics rubber materials they are insulators you should remember this energy gap of insulator is greater than energy gap of semiconductors which is greater than energy gap of conductors the good conductors aluminum copper silver and gold we see the atomic structure of these four conductors first one the aluminum its atomic number is 13 so 13 electrons are revolving in the orbits in the first orbit 2 second orbit 
the third orbit outermost orbit three electrons they are valence electrons of aluminium next one is copper its atomic number 29 so first orbit two electrons second orbit eight third orbit 18 fourth one is that is outermost one is having one electron that is valence electron for copper then silver its atomic number is 47 So first orbit having two electrons. Next one eight. Next one eighteen. Next orbit having eighteen. The outermost is having one electron. That is valence electron of silver. Then for gold, its atomic number seventy nine. Uh, first orbit two. Second one eight. Third one is eighteen. Fourth one is thirty two. Fifth orbit is eighteen. The outermost orbit is having one electron. That is valence electron of gold. All these four materials are good conductors. aluminium copper silver and gold these materials can be used for transmission of electricity but economic point of view we are choosing aluminium and copper we are using aluminium and copper because of the economic viability of these two materials silver and gold are rare metals they are costly so we are using aluminium and copper for transmission of electricity charge so charge can be defined as property matters they are either positive or negative in an atom protons are positively charged particles electrons are negatively charged particles the charge of this proton or electron is equal to 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb whereas 1 coulomb is equal to 1 by the charge 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 that is equal to 6.242 into 10 power 18 6.242 into 10 to the power 18 electrons so charge of 6.242 into 10 to the power 18 electrons is called 1 coulomb uh, coulomb he found that when we are having two charged particles uh, named as q1 and q2 and they are separated by the distance r then the force because of these two charged particles is given by q1 q2 by r square force is directly proportional to the charge of particles multiplication of charge of particles and inversely proportional to the distance between them he found the coulomb's law to honor coulomb we are using coulomb as unit of measurement of charge if the charges are same that is like charges plus and plus like polarity charges are repel each other plus plus repel minus minus repel each other the opposite charges plus and minus they attract one another so opposite charges attract like charges repel each other then current the movement of the charges movement of charges per second is called current current is measured by the units of amperes to honor andre mary ampere who measured the movement of charges first to honor ampere we are using ampere as unit of current i is given by charge per time that is charge moved per second is called current the current direction is mentioned by two ways one is conventional current direction another one is electron current direction conventional current direction and electron current direction conventional current direction that current is flowing from positive to negative but in actual case electrons are negatively charged so from negative terminal only electrons are flowing towards positive terminal the green line shows electron current flow direction 
that is from negative to positive. But the conventional current direction used for all computations is from plus to minus, positive to negative, shown in red color line. Why this is? The actual electrons are flowing from negative to positive, but we are using opposite direction, that is from plus to minus for all computations. That is why. This is because Benjamin Franklin's theory. He proposed that charge is flowing from high pressure to low pressure, that is from plus to minus. From then, all computations were done and being done by taking the current direction from positive to negative. So, it is called as conventional current. By convention, we are following this direction from plus to negative, positive to negative. So, it is conventional current direction. Next one, the voltage. It is the potential difference or electromotive force. Voltage is potential difference of the two points of interest. Otherwise, electromotive force. This is the force required to drive the electrons through materials. It is electromotive force. Electron motion. Force required for electron motion. So, it is called electromotive force. The voltage is work done by charge. Voltage can be defined as work done by charge. The important term electron volt. Electron volt is work done. It is energy. It is very important to understand about electron volt. It is the very fundamental of all electrical and electronics engineering. To understand this electron volt is solve a problem. You see, here already we saw that voltage is work done by charge. So, work done is equal to charge into voltage. Work done is energy, right? So, it is joule. It is measured by units, joules. So, one joule is the work done to move one electron, one electron charge by one volt. The work done required to move one electron charge by one volt is called one joule, right? That is equal to charge, electron charge E and voltage is V, that is electron volt. That is equal to 1.602 in 10 to the power minus 19. This is charge of an electron into voltage is 1 volt. So, 1 joule is equal to 1.602 in 10 to the power minus 19 electron volt we can say, otherwise coulomb volt we can say. The other formula for work done is equal to power into time. Energy is equal to power into time. So, joule is equal to a unit of power is watt and a unit of time is taken as seconds in seconds. So, joule is equal to watt second, then watt is equal to joule per second. So, 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second. The watt is equal to, here we know, and joule is equal to electron volt. Already we have seen, joule is equal to work done to move electron. So, it is 1 electron into 1 volt, electron volt. So, the joule can be replaced by electron volt. So, electron volt per second. To understand further, we solved a problem here. We take a 100 watts bulb is glowing, is working for 1 hour. The voltage is standard voltage 230 volt. Then now here we are going to find the number of electrons moved for glowing this 100 watts lamp for 1 hour by using 230 volt. Right? Uh, we know that energy is power into time. So, power is 100 watts given, time means 1 hour, right. So, 100 watt hour is the energy here, that is equal to electron volt already we have seen. Here, we have we have to find the number of electrons that we take as n, this number of electrons into charge of one electron is E into volt, that is charge into voltage, right. So, charge is number of electrons into charge of one electron is E into 
voltage that is equal to n into charge of one electron is 1.602 in 10 to the power minus 19 into 230. It is uh, wrongly given as two multiplication symbols, it is only one symbol into 230, right. Then number of electrons n is equal to 100 that is power 100 watts into hour, one hour is equal to 3600 seconds, right. So, 100 into 3600 divide by divide by the electron charge of one electron and volt. So, 1.602 in 10 to the power minus 19 into 230 that is equal to 9.77 uh, into 10 to the power 21 electrons. So, this number of electrons moved towards the circuit, moves in the circuit, moved in the circuit to glow the 100 watts lamp for 1 hour at 230 volt. The other way we can confirm this, we know that current is equal to power by voltage, that is power is equal to current into voltage, P is equal to V into I. So, I is equal to P by V, that is power by voltage, that is equal to 100 watts here, divided by voltage is 230, we get 0 0.434782. Here for accuracy, uh, we take 6 decimals. 0.434782 amperes. Then other definition of charge uh, current is equal to charge per time that is charge per second. So, charge is equal to current into seconds. The current is 0.434782 and number of seconds is 3600, one hour right. So, 3600. We get 1565.271 coulombs, 1565.271 Coulomb, that is the total charge. The total charge is equal to number of electrons into charge of one electron. So, n into E. n is to be found number of electrons into the charge of one electron is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19. That is equal to 1565.271 coulombs. So, the number of electrons n is equal to 1565.271 divided by 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19. That gives 9.77039 into 10 to the power 21 electrons. You see, both are same. So, 9.77 into 10 to the power 21 electrons that moved in the circuit to glow the 100 watts lamp for 1 hour by using 230 volt voltage. Next one important property of material is resistance. It is the property of material to oppose the flow of charges through material. That is resistance. It is measured in Ohm to honor George Simon Ohm who proposed Ohm's law, right? To honor him, we used Ohm as unit of resistance. This R is given by rho L by A, where R is resistance, rho is resistivity of material, L is length of the material and A is cross section area of the material, R is equal to rho L by A. The unit of resistance is ohm, we can symbolically note it as ohm. Resistivity rho is equal to R A by L ohm meter or A by L ohm meter. Conductance S is given by 1 by R, inverse of resistance. So, unit is also inverse of ohm. So, there OHM here, MHO mu. Then conductivity is the ability of material to conduct charges. That is given by sigma is equal to 1 by rho. Conductivity is inverse of resistivity, sigma is equal to 1 by rho. So, the unit is ohm inverse meter inverse, ohm inverse means mo, so mo by meter. This electricity can be classified as static electricity and dynamic electricity. Static electricity means momentary electricity, this electricity present only for the moments, uh, not continuous. Example, the triboelectric effect, the electricity uh, developed by triboelectric effect are all static electricity. 
uh, when we rub plastics on cloth materials, it exerts some force, right? This electricity is static electricity. The electricity in lightning is also static electricity, all because of triboelectric effect. Then other category is dynamic electricity. This is continuous electricity. Here, continuous flow of charges. Uh, we can say battery as example for this dynamic electricity and all our home appliances connected to uh, electricity board grid, right? They are continuous flow of charges. So, this, this they are all the examples for uh, dynamic electricity. Then, generation of the electricity, the six principles are used when at present. These only, these six principles, either of these six principles are used for generation of electricity. First one is friction, that is triboelectric effect, static electricity. The example is the electricity in the lightning, the first fixer. Then light, electricity, electricity generated from light, that is solar voltaic cells, solar panels, the second picture. Then heat, example is thermocouple. Here, two metals are in two different temperatures. The difference in temperature, difference in temperature that causes electricity. Example, thermocouple. Next one, pressure. Piezoelectric crystals. They convert pressure into electricity. So, piezoelectric crystals are example for electricity generated from pressure. Next one, chemical process. Electricity generated because of electrochemical process, example battery. Then electromagnetic induction, electricity generated by the principle of electromagnetic induction, example alternators and generators. Now we have come to the conclusion of this lecture. Just we summarize about the learning from this lecture. First one electricity that is physical nature of movement of charges through materials called as electricity. There are two types of electricity, static electricity and dynamic electricity. Static electricity is momentary electricity, present only for moments. Dynamic electricity is continuous one. Electricity by triboelectric effect is static electricity. The charge is property of all matters. The charge is either positive charge or negative charge. Positive charge, protons are responsible for positive charges. Electrons are responsible for negative charges. Next one, current. Flow of charge per second is called current. Unit of current is ampere. Unit of charge is coulombs. So, coulombs per second is equal to ampere. Then, voltage. The force required to move the charges, to move the electrons in a circuit in a, through materials is called voltage. Voltage is potential difference or electromotive force. The force required to drive the electrons through materials is measured by volts. Here, volt is used to honor Alexandra Volta who invented battery. The next one, resistance. It is the property of materials to op oppose the flow of charge through it. It's called resistance. Its unit is Ohm to honor George Simon Ohm, who proposed Ohm's law. Then its inverse is called conductance. The property of material to conduct the charges called conductance. Inverse of resistance is called conductance. Its unit is Mo, MHO, inverse of Ohm. The resistivity is the ability of material to oppose the flow of charge. Its inverse called conductivity, right? Conductivity is the ability of material to conduct the charges through it. Unit of resistivity, ohm meter. Unit of conductivity is ohm inverse, meter inverse. Then the electricity can be generated by either of six principles, even nowadays, either of this six. All electricity generation falls under either of this six principles. First one by friction, example static electricity, second one by light, solar panel, third one is 
heat thermocouple fourth one is pressure piezoelectric crystals next one is chemical process battery next one is electromagnetic induction principle that is our alternators or generators i hope this session would be very useful to understand the fundamentals of electrical engineering about the electricity and uh, uh, basic terminologies of electricity uh, thank you friends for watching the video and please subscribe thank you very much